What's up, everybody? Thanks, as always, for supporting the show. It would mean a lot to me if you would take a second to scroll down and hit that subscribe button to the Hoops Tonight YouTube channel, and then follow me on social media on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter so you guys don't miss any of our content over the course of this season. All right, let's talk some basketball. All right, moving on to Wolves-Hawks. Tale of two halves in this one. The Wolves won the first half 79-60. to and then the Hawks came back and won the second half 67 to 34 to notch a double digit victory to get to two and two. In the first half, the Wolves were just cooking on offense. Ant was doing everything well. He was playing like a bona fide superstar in the first half. He was hitting pull up threes. He was hitting post up fadeaways. He was driving and kicking for threes. Uh, Anthony Edwards had five assists in the first quarter, which was the first time he's ever done that in his career. He had this like ridiculous Jordan esque reverse layup where he planted right left and then like went up and down and under onto the uh, onto the right side of the basket. He was absolutely destroying the Hawks. Nas Reed uh, got going. He hit uh, three three-point shots. He was attacking closeouts. He was cutting out of the weak side corner for lob dunks. He looked great. Rudy Gobert dominated the second quarter defensively. You look up, they're up 79 to 60. And it um, you know, and then on the other end, like and we've talked about it with the Hawks, Trey Young and DeJounte Murray just haven't been playing that well. And they didn't play particularly well in the first half. They're pretty mediocre. Then you go a few minutes into the second half, and then something just clicks into place. Uh, for the Hawks on both ends of the floor. They ratcheted up defensively. Jalen Johnson, like, kind of locked up Carl Anthony Towns, kept him in front, uh, didn't, didn't, wasn't susceptible to Cat's bully ball attack. Then he did the same thing to Nas Reed when he checked into the game. I thought DeJounte Murray did an awesome job keeping Ant in front and baiting him into pull up jump shots, which he ended up missing in the second half. And then all of their athletes, all over the floor, were flying around in rotation, flying in passing lanes, getting out in transition, and then running out the other way for dunks and layups. I talked about this in my season preview for the Hawks, if you guys remember. They were 19th last year in transition frequency. They are second in transition frequency this year. I talked in the season preview, this is an athletic team. They need to look to avoid the half court, get out and run as much as possible, especially off their defense. And they've been doing that at a really high level so far to start this season. And then in the half court, both Trey Young and DeJounte, but mostly DeJounte, just took it to the Wolves on the uh, uh, j- not even like in screening actions for the most part. A lot of it was just taking it to their best perimeter defenders by beating them off the bounce. Like DeJounte Murray was barbecuing Anthony Edwards. And we're going to talk about this in a little bit, but Ant reaches too much and gets himself out of position and doesn't do himself any favors. But DeJounte Murray was do- using pump fakes and, and, and spin moves and counter moves to just get around Anthony Edwards and get to his spots. He got his pull-up jump shot going. He got to the rim. Um, he, he ended up finishing the game with 41 points. He was incredible. He's plus 25 in this game. And then Trey Young was pretty good too. He was uh, beating Jaden McDaniels off the dribble and getting the defense into rotation. Now Jaden kind of tightened that up in the fourth quarter. But at that point, they had already kind of gotten control of the game. Uh, but it was nothing. It was nothing fancy. It was just brute force. Like Trey Young and Dejounte won the shit out of their matchups in that second quarter on both ends of the floor. To to and we're going to talk about the 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 Hawks defense, like because the it's becoming a cultural thing in these short bursts. Like in that second half run, even Trey Young was like sprinting over the top of screens. There was a play where Anthony Edwards got him on a switch and tried to post him up and he fought in front and he fronted the post and denied the post entry. Like Trey Young was legitimately giving a shit on the defensive end of the floor. And then just in general, the flying around in rotation, all of their athleticism on the floor. When you have DeJounte Murray out there with DeAndre Hunter and Jalen Johnson and then with Sadiq Bey coming in and A.J. Griffin coming in, like they are just super fast and rangy and athletic. And then their front court players in Okongwu and Capella are also pretty athletic, versatile players that can cover ground. And so they're capable of being an elite defensive team. Like, uh, and we're like in the big picture, this has been a, a run. This is a rundown of the Hawks defense so far this year. They had a 112 defensive rating against Charlotte. They lost a 119 defensive rating against the Knicks. They lost. First half against the Bucks, an 89 defensive rating, and they won. They had a 129 defensive rating in the second half, but they had built such a big lead, they were able to weather that. First half against the Timberwolves, a 161 defensive rating. Found themselves down by 21 points. But second half against the Timberwolves, a 68 defensive rating, and they won the half by 33 points and won the game. So you can kind of see a clear formula here. When they lean into their defensive potential and they make that the identity of their team, they get out and transition more. It invigorates. Like Literally, DeJounte Murray got going in his rhythm in transition. 
Like that's the formula. Defend, get out and run, find the easy shots. When you're stuck in the half court and in rhythm and Trey, Trey Young and DeJounte Murray can take you home. And then one other thing I noticed on the offensive end of the floor, they used a lot of Jalen Johnson, Sadiq Bay, and DeAndre Hunter as screeners which is something they didn't used to do because of spacing concerns. When you had John Collins and Clint Capella on the floor, you almost had to bring one of them into screen because you couldn't have two non-shooters off the ball in your two-man game. It just made it too easy to guard. But now they're actually running a lot of these like, uh, a forward to guard screen actions with, with a wing, a wing that can shoot, and they're having success there. All three of them, Jalen Johnson, Sadiq Bey, and DeAndre Hunter, each of them have hit two pick-and-pop jump shots from the three-point line already this season. That's turned into a significant chunk of their offense. And again, those like little ghost screens or, or pick-and-pops, they also are a lot harder to guard at the point of attack, and they allow DeJounte Murray and Trey Young to get downhill. And like their offense will go up a level as soon as Trey Young and DeJounte Murray start being consistently good on that end. But the, I, 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 I predicted that the Hawks would go up a level this year. And again, it's been mixed results through two game, through four games, but I do think that potential has clearly been on display with what they've done on the defensive end of the floor. NBA fans, the wait is over. Basketball is back. And DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA, is celebrating with an unbeatable offer. New customers can score $200 instantly in bonus bets for throwing down $5 on the NBA. Win or lose, it doesn't matter. You'll start the season with an instant dub. And with DraftKings parlays, everyone's got a shot at an even bigger basketball win. String together multiple bets from the same game or build your parlay across multiple games for a shot at making your payday even sweeter. Basketball's more fun when you're in on the action. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code HOOPS. That's H O O. P.S. New customers can get $200 in bonus bets instantly for betting just $5. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code HOOPS. The crown is yours. For a limited time, Verizon customers can get Netflix and NFL Plus for just $25 a month. It's called Plus Play. That's 120 bucks in annual savings. Plus Play is a platform where Verizon customers can shop, manage, and save on the subscriptions that you already love, right? Like Netflix and NFL Plus. With NFL Plus Premium, you get access to live games on mobile, my fave, NFL Red Zone, NFL Network, and more. Just go to verizon.com slash plus play. Verizon.com slash plus plus play to save on Netflix and NFL plus today for a limited time only now limited time only. Moving on to the wolves. Uh, This loss drops them to one and two. They haven't been good enough on either end of the floor. Jaden McDaniels being out has definitely hurt them. He's been their best perimeter defender for a couple years now. One of the top two or three of them in the league, to be honest. And it was his first game back, and you could tell he was getting his legs underneath him. He looked good offensively. He was, what, five for six from the field and two for two from three. Um, Definitely struggled a little bit keeping Trey Young in front in the third quarter, but then you saw him kind of get his, like, second wind or whatever in that fourth quarter and got some stops there. Um, But, like, Nikhil Alexander-Walker wasn't good defensively in that Hawks game. Anthony Edwards has been pretty bad defensively. He reaches in way too much. He takes way too many defensive possessions off. He's having an amazing offensive season so far. 25-7-5, and 57% true shooting, shooting the jump shot extremely well, 67% effective field goal percentage on pull-up jump shot, or on jumpers, 71% on pull-up jumpers. But he's only 8-for-18 at the rim, which is to be expected, right? This is a team that has poor spacing. Rudy Gobert, uh, another game where just like, it's amazing how many times like he'll catch underneath the basket and not score. Like He has stone hands, and then he he just can't make shots at the rim. He's only 15 for 25 at the rim. That would be bad for a wing, let alone a center, right? Um, and so it's a lot easier for teams to help off of him and recover, which hurts their spacing. So, like, I'm not super concerned about the rim finishing for Ant. I know that's something that's going to be good for him in the long run. The playmaking has been at a higher level than we're accustomed to seeing from him. But that defensive end is a huge part of this team's identity. This team is not good enough offensively, especially when you're playing guys like Nikhail Alexander-Walker who can go ice-cold shooting, Anthony Edwards who can settle for a lot of jump shots, Rudy Gobert, bad hands, bad finishing, Kyle Anderson, a guy who struggles to space the floor from the three-point line. Like With that kind of lineup, you're never going to be a great offensive team. What you are is you're a grinded-out rock fight team. You're supposed to be a top-five defense 
that strangles teams, gets out in transition, and relies on Anthony Edwards' bully ball, basically, to win games on the offensive end of the floor. That's what they need to do. And, and so, like, early on in the season, you know, again, all my optimism around the Wolves was surrounding the defensive end, and they just haven't been good enough on that end. Um, 22nd in offense. Again, that Gobert piece I just talked about with his hands. Cat's not playing well either. He's averaging 16 points a game, 37% from the field, 24% from three. He's shooting two for 14 on spot-up possessions. That's really hurting their spacing as well. Four for 21 on jump shots in total so far this season. So Cat obviously has got to play better as well. Um, I think I think Jaden needs to almost be more aggressive offensively with some of the other issues they're having on that end. If Jaden starts being more aggressive offensively, gets his legs back underneath him, if Carl Towns starts playing more like himself on the offensive end, if Anthony Edwards locks in on the perimeter, having Jaden back out there because he wasn't there for the first two games, I think they're going to be fine in the big picture, but it's definitely been a disappointing first three games on the Wolves' front. <laughs> 